Beyond the Wrench with Jay Ganinen from Wrenchway. Welcome back to Beyond the Wrench. My name is Jay Ganinen and I am your host. On this week's episode, we had the pleasure of bringing on John Gardner and Josh Ellis. They're instructors down at Chipola College in Florida, and they're also the hosts of a show called Tech Garage. And for those of you that watch some of those Saturday morning car shows, uh, as I do, you notice that Tech Garage is on every week, and it is a really, really good show, and I, I seem to learn something every time that I watch it. So we, we brought them on to talk about a bunch of different things, but really, we start with how they got a TV show in the first place and some of the backside stories of the TV show itself, uh, and then take it a little a little further, right? So then we, di we dive into the stuff that is important to the school and how they put together advisory committees to make them more impactful, how they get industry more involved to make the program better and building the program. You'll notice one thing that they talk about in this episode is uh, that they've substantially grown a program. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, so, you know, just talking about that relationship between industry and schools, how you as your piece of industry are able to really step up and help them out. I, I think they pull back the curtain and give you some really good insight into that on top of the really cool thing, which is that they, they host a TV show, right? So uh, John and Josh were just excellent guests, excellent people, and I really enjoyed this show. I think all of you will as well. Now, before we get to the show itself, I did want to announce the winner of our higher or lower game for last week, and that was Bryce Zuderveen with a high score of 32. With that, Bryce wins a $100 Amazon gift card, and that gift card was brought to us by our friends at Caliber Collision. Caliber Collision repairs cars back to pre-collision condition. Caliber Collision's technicians receive ongoing comprehensive industry-recognized training and utilize the latest technology to ensure they restore your car back to manufacturer standards. And, and special thank you to Caliber. They're really good people. Uh, just in general and, and have really done a lot to support uh, our Wrenchway Insiders. So go check them out if you haven't had a chance. Unfortunately, Bryce did not turn over the Queen of Hearts, so that pot rises yet again to $3,300. That, my friends, is a lot of money, and we're going to be giving that out to the next person that flips the Queen of Hearts. So if you want a shot at that, make sure you get out to the Wrenchway app answer the challenges, play the games to earn your shot at that $3,300. It's real money. I know the, the last few people that we've sent this to uh, have almost been surprised when they when they get the check, right? They get a lot of money for that. So uh, $3,300 is on the line. If you want a shot at that, get out there, help us understand what you're seeing with your boots on the ground and and uh, help us improve the industry and also get a shot at that $3,300. Now I'll get out of the way, let you enjoy this episode. I, again, really had fun with it. John and Josh are just really, really good people and uh, just had a, a blast learning more about the show and the school. I think you will as well. Hope you enjoy the show and hope you have a great week. Take care. All right, on this week's episode, I am excited to have John Gardner and Josh Ellis join me. And we'll learn a lot about them, but uh, a lot of you may have seen them on TV, uh, have a pretty cool program on, on TV, uh, as well as running a great, uh, great program, a great school, uh, and just a pleasure to be joined by you two. How are you guys doing today? Hey, great, Jay. Thanks for having us so much. And right away, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. It's going to be a great time. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah. All right. So let's let's kick things off with let, let's start with you, John. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, kind of your background, and uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Well, like most automotive instructors and technicians, I mean, I've been in both shoes. Uh, been doing this now for 28 years, actually teaching automotive technology. Started out as a General Motors ASAP technician, um, automotive service excellence program. Um, graduated from there, worked in a dealership for seven to 10 years, um, started working at some aftermarket places here and there, and just got into some doing some training at night. Uh, did some training for General Motors for their STG 
um, some different things at a school and just kind of fell in love with teaching. Um, started teaching dropout profession classes and just found out, wow, how rewarding that was. Being able to work with industry through the General Motors ASAP program. We just built a couple of programs. I uh, went to uh, South Florida to Sheridan University down there, and then um, I moved up here to North Florida. I've been teaching for 28 years, um, just doing what I love to do. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy 28 years later to look back and see all the uh, all the lives we've changed and, uh, you know, creating futures. It's just, it's good stuff, really good stuff. It, really impactful too. I mean, just having, uh, I, taking joy in that, I think is so important when you're working with young people and trying to tank, really guide their life. It, it's a it's a big deal. So uh, appreciate all of those years of that. And Josh, let's hear a little bit about you. Well, actually this guy was my instructor <laughs> uh, many years ago and, uh, Grew up seeing the commercials for UTI and Wyotech and that kind of thing, and I looked into it, and um, it was a little bit out of my price range, and pursuing a degree here at Chipola College, and I had no idea we even had an automotive program, and so uh, one of our counselors was telling me about it, and I came down and checked it out, and I didn't know how to barely even turn on the car at the time, I didn't. <laughs> so anyways, uh, pursued that for a while, and then I pursued the engineering route, and I even went into ministry for a little bit, and that's kind of where I developed my my passion for people, and I was able to get back home to this area. And long story short, an opening became available here at the college, and I just joined this guy, and he's been a blessing to me, and I've been able to help invest in students, and just, um, that's just where my heart is, is, is loving all these students. I say kids, but <laughs> I guess they're adults. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I was grown when they were back in that time. It's, that, made, that shows my age when I feel like college students are kids now, but they're, they're adults, and just being able to invest in them and, help guide them not just in the area of uh of, but also just with life and that's that's what i'm excited about i enjoy yeah and i i think again so important to the impact that you guys are having there at the school uh, a really really big deal now tell me a little bit about this tv show you guys have pretty popular show unbelievable yeah just crazy um tech garage uh motor trend discoveries motor trend network um saturday mornings 8 a.m man eastern and pacific time uh just crazy we just you know we started training for manufacturers uh, about nine or ten years ago 11 years ago and um started to train for manufacturers in college and automotive programs so you know, we're in the forefront with this stuff. I mean, we're just two lucky guys. So we did that. We were training for manufacturers, uh, Motor Trend Group and, and a Masters Entertainment Group. They actually saw some of that stuff and they said, hey, let's let's pitch a pilot. You know, why don't you do what you do? And, and you know, nine years ago, I said, well, that's the most boring show on television. <laughs> you know, who wants to sit there and I'm teaching? I mean, this is horrible. And, um, you know, we just teach like old Dave Bowman and Sam and Two Guys Garage and, and, and back in the day when they had Shade Tree Mechanic. And uh, I thought that would never happen. No sparks flying, no cursing, no wrenches, no 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 craziness, you know, just strictly teaching. And lo and behold, um, here we are, uh, season eight, nine years later. And uh, we moved from Sunday to Saturday morning. We moved to prime time. And just the show has a phenomenal following. And just it's amazing how much how many people are starting it really is and it, it really it shows in the schools i mean you know any any instructor out there could do what we're doing we're doing the same thing we're doing we just got lucky and a production crew came down and shot a pilot and it, it was a huge success but you know this is happening everywhere jay and all of your schools and, and all around the country i mean it's just it's amazing but that's just that that reputable information somewhere they can get it from and they know they're going to get a reputable source and and that's what the colleges and the tech centers do no doubt about it yeah, and I, I've watched Tech Garage uh, for a while now, and I, I really enjoy what you guys do. And I honestly think there's some level of almost calming uh, when I watch it. Like, it, it, you guys have a really <laughs> cool good. way of, of uh, just doing it in a really laid back fashion. And I think uh, it makes it a really easy watch, and it's super educational. Like, I, I feel like I pick up something every time I watch it. So, uh, kudos to you guys for doing it. I, I do have to ask: Were you nervous the first time you did the show? You know, I just—it's crazy. It's just crazy. I mean, back in a prior life, I actually played professional highlight, which was nuts. So, that, you know, back with the Basque, and there was five thousand people in there. So. It didn't really bother me. I think he was a little nervous at first. I but still am. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do. I mean, it's crazy with six cameras and a jib, and you know, 
send down a big production crew and stuff and you're always nervous but to the extent of where we just teach and, and have a good time and do what we do it's almost like we're doing it in class and after eight seasons it's just it's gotten so fun now we just we just have fun with it we have a good time when we do it and uh we do get nervous. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, I don't think anybody wouldn't. There's some 84 million in an audience on a Saturday morning. I mean, you know, and, and, and it's just, it's weird. I mean, you know, they'll pick you apart. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do 28 minutes of just perfect teaching. And, you know, I'll tell you that, you know, this, this bottle is uh, empty and it's full and, and I'll get 30 hate emails of you don't know what you're doing. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, you know, we're, we don't, we're not, we don't know all, you know, we don't, we don't claim to know all. We just put the information out there and it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's been, it's been a heck of a ride. Yeah. It's, it's neat to be able to teach something that we teach every day. This is the show is really a concentrated version of what we teach at the college. But for me, it's just different when you have a camera right in your face <laughs> and a light beam on you. I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit different for me. So it's like, I'm going to say something wrong and I have to start over, but this guy, he's a natural. I just ride on the coattail. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, we're both, we're both, flat rate. I mean, we both grew up with flat rate. So, I mean, it's like, you know, uh, come on, let's get this thing moving. And it's absolutely the wrong business for flat rate people. I mean, I mean, we, this story, I mean, we were doing a push button start on a car and, and they wanted to get a shot of him push button starting the car. And, you know, I mean, we're in the middle of a show and it's like, well, we need that shot to let the audience know we're starting the car. I'm like, I just told him to start the car and that's not how TV works. Like you got to paint this whole story. So long story short, yeah, what I'm happened? Just, I'm just sitting there in the car. <laughs> I'm like, I really don't have to be in this scene. It's like, so they got guys crawling into the back seat and there's a camera on the passenger side, the camera in the back seat. There's a camera in the driver's side pointing in my face. I got to get the light. They don't want a shadow on this side. So it probably took, I mean, it took 40, close to 40 minutes, 45 minutes just to get everything set up. For me <laughs> push a button. One we've, push button, sorry, yeah. No, let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> we thought we thought customers looking over our shoulders were bad. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 And then it's like, okay, push it again. Do it again. Like yeah. thirty times. What shot are they going to use? And then on the show, it's like he started the car. I'm like, man, that was in forty-five minutes. Are you serious? <laughs> How old as if they do it and then they don't even show it? So. Yeah, I guess it's <laughs> chopped too. Yeah. yeah, it's the sitting room floor. <laughs> Man, that's funny. Uh, so, how do you guys come up with content for it? it you know, obviously, our uh, automobile has endless content, but how do you select what content to put on the show? And that's the most difficult. I mean, when they come here, I mean, you know, we we did a supercharger one year, and quite frankly, that takes you know four or five days when you're shooting it. So. They're trying to do 13 episodes and, you know, like anything else, it's a business. So they're trying to get it done in a, in a, in a pretty quick time. So we just, we just, we run into a lot of stuff here, which is yeah. neat at the college. We run into a lot of new stuff and some new technology. And when we go to training, I mean, this year we got um, Sean Lanou with Continental talking about the new TPMS and we try to bring people in and we, we try to keep the word tech. You know, we do electric vehicles, anything we learn new, we'll bring back here and we'll just set the stage. I mean, it's, it's all TV magic. It's all fake and all prepped and everything's good about it, but the, the education's real. So we just, we pick things that we know are new. You know, it's hard after eight seasons. My producer, Dave Dobson, he's phenomenal. And he tells me all the time, he's like, listen, just you can do what you did in season one. Nobody even knows. And it's a whole new audience. I'm like, I feel like I'm cheating them. I'm like, we need every single show. And there's only so many things on a car when you do six episodes times, you know, whatever, 13. To, to, that's, a, that's a lot of stuff. But uh, we repeat a lot of stuff, but it's always a new twist. Yeah. We have, we have like 40 students. So between those 40 students, we're bound to have somebody with a car problem. <laughs> keep it in the context of being relevant, everybody's going to have car problems. But at the same time, something that maybe you can do at your house, you can have a volt meter. Sometimes we throw some stuff on the show that, that they're not necessarily going to have at their house and you just can't get away from it. Some things you just can't get away from having a, a nice oscilloscope and things like that, that will requ require a more professional technician to, to do. But we like to show people exactly what's going on with the vehicle as well as how to fix it. And a big thing we do too, is just at least make them comfortable to take it to a shop. I mean, you know, uh, we get to it eventually, but we talk about these students and talking the lingo and, you know, everybody likes to use these, you know, three words and TPS and tire TPMS and so say TPMS, tire pressure monitors. And if we're just at least educating the customer about their car, so when they take it to a shop, they got that better relationship with that technician or a shop, then we're doing our job. 
Yeah. I, and I, I feel like it transitions nicely into talking about the program and, and really, you know, it, really what is the real stuff, right? Like when, when you're working in your classrooms and the labs every day, um, you know, something you would, uh, the, the three of us had talked about prior to the podcast was getting industry involved. But before we do that, give us a little background on the program itself. Uh, so uh, roughly how many students do you have uh, per year and, and kind of give us an outlier, uh, outlier of the, the program as a whole? Yeah, um, well, it's an automotive technology program. It's a master certified ASC program. So, you know, we were NATEF now ASC certified, but um, we just teach all eight areas. Um, it started here at Chipola College in Mariana, Florida, which is just a little five county area. We started with six students back in 1999. And um, we now we're at we're at a record high right now. We're at uh, 30, about 40, 40, yeah, about 40, 40, wow. 40. We usually cut it off about 25 or 30, but I don't know. I've been doing this for so long. It's so unpredictable. I don't know if it's economy or what it is, but we have a ton of students, which is great because we'll obviously talk about the technician shortage as well, but um, just just teaching. I mean, that's all we did. We, we just, and he's the same way. I mean, I tell these instructors and I don't want to step on people's toes, but it, it's true. If you teach them, they'll come. I mean, you know, we're, we're in here. We're not in the office. We're, we're, we're glorified cheerleaders all day long. I mean, we're either behind them, touching a wrench or with them and two people to cars. I mean, the whole paradigm shift of that automotive technology, you know, if there's shop guys listening, just we're not sitting there fixing the car and eight guys are watching over our shoulders. That's not what a good program's doing. A good program is, is two people to a car at the most, or even peer shadowing where the uh, turn a rotor, he's going to turn a rotor, teach the next kid to turn a rotor, then the next kid's going to teach a rotor or whatever scenario may be. But we're just, we're, we're running, man. The day goes by like that. I mean, we're here at 7.30, we leave at 3.34 and, and, and it's crazy. It's just total controlled chaos. That's what, and it's fun. It's fun. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't like the summer vacations. I like to come to work because it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, these kids, I mean, automotive programs, we're down the hill in the college. So they call it down the hill. I mean, literally down the hill. I mean, we get a lot of transfers and stuff and, and it's sad. It's sad that they think of those kids that way because it's so untrue. Uh, Jay, these kids are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's amazing what they can fix and what they can diagnose. I mean, and look at each other and sometimes we just go, wow, that works. That's yeah. just <laughs> unreal, dude. I mean, it's like just nuts, absolutely nuts. We had a student pass an electrical ASE with 40, 48, 48 out of 50. Um. Out of fifty, the kid's eighteen years old. I He's mean, doing roll, doing roll. Yeah, he was seventeen at the time. Yeah, nuts. I haven't done that. I've been taking ASEs for twenty years. I mean, just just crazy, crazy, crazy how they go about fixing cars and how they go about thinking. And it's a little different, but they're they're by far brilliant. I mean, it's we've never had a, a more group of kids. It's it's it's. I feel great for the future for the shops. I love that, and I think that. That can be a false narrative across shops across the country, right? Where they'll talk about, you know, those those lazy young kids coming up through, they they can't do anything. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You you have the wrong thought. And it's just like if you know, a shop won't hire a, a tech out of a, a certain college because they don't feel like they got properly educated or that like they've done it in the past and they haven't gotten good results out of it. I always think I'm like you're hiring an individual, you're not hiring the school, like you're hiring the person. And to have that false narrative of whether it's age or where they went to school or anything like that, it, I think it really puts you behind the eight ball because you're, you're going to be looking. It's really hard to find people. And if you have that false mindset, then I think it makes it really difficult. One thing I did want to ask you about, we do have a lot of schools that listen to this, both the high school at the high school level and the post-secondary level. Any advice to those schools out there on how to build a program? You guys have done it, right? You've you've gone from a smaller program to becoming a really, really strong program. Any advice to those schools out there that are listening? Josh, how about a new instructor? I mean, a couple of years. <laughs> they throw you the keys. I mean, been there, done that. I mean, yeah, they I know you guys don't don't write me. I know. Yeah, they throw you the keys. <laughs> go. There's one tool, one car. I mean, you know, that's how it is. It's unfortunate, but uh we've done it. Yeah. And you have to have a school. I mean, it is what it is. You have to have schools behind you and willing to throw some finances out there at you to help 
But at the same time, what's more important than that is your uh, the dealerships, the mom and pop shops, people that can donate vehicles. And, you know, something might have been donated to the junkyard. You go out to the junkyard and it's like, hey, this thing doesn't run. Do you mind if we take it here and we something we can take apart, put back together some struts and all that kind of stuff. So just building relationships. Um, I would say also besides building a relationship with the community, uh, the students, building relationships with the students in the high schools, uh, let them know that you, and it's cliche, but you know, people don't care. People don't care what you know until you, they know that you care. Yeah. And once they see that, they see that you can teach them and want to teach them, they'll hang in, even if you suck as a teacher, they'll, they'll hang in there with you for a little bit. No, they'll, they'll learn something from you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm a firm believer in you teach and they'll come. I just, just, that's all. I mean, we just... You know, I don't, I tried, you know, everybody's like, you don't answer the phone. And no, man, it's three, four o'clock. There's 40 kids here. I mean, that's, that's my priority is those kids. That's it. Flat out. I mean, we can physical plant maintenance people coming down and want this and that, you know, we're not going to do that. They know kids are a priority. Sorry for interrupting. And we'll come back later. I mean, you know, we're, we're paid instructors to cater to them. You know, I know guys are going to argue with me. Well, these kids, this, that, no. I mean, you know, we got oil changers and we got ability techs. I mean, they're all going to start out as oil changers. We know that when they get out there, the shops need to know that too, but simply just caring, man. I mean, we're still, we're not above putting one in a headlock. We're not above, of, I mean, just. <laughs> I won't come try to me out today. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a bear hug. Give like, you a bear hug. So who I mean, is this before I hurt you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, they like to say, you just, I think number one, you just got to really focus on the students and try to care about them. And I mean, you know, do care about them and, and if you're having fun doing what you do, they'll come, they'll come, they'll see that really, really quick. And, and the administration support, the advisory board support, this is all huge, but you have to start with baby steps, put it together, one car, and then it just starts growing from there. The word of mouth gets out that you're teaching. I mm -hmm. mean, just teach, teach what you know. You don't have to be a superstar teacher. You don't have to know hybrid batteries. You don't have to know this stuff. I mean, if you know how to time a distributor, man, get a time and line out and time a distributor, get them around you, have them do it for a while. Be a little flexible, man. Get off those lesson plans sometimes and just read your audience, read the kids. I mean, you know, they're putting their heads down, man. That's a 30 minute video. Stop that sucker and change pace, grab something, grab a book, grab a car. Hey, let's go out here. You guys got two cars. There's four wheel bearings. Let's go pull wheel bearings out. We're studying wheel bearings. Sometimes we roll in here for three hours and they're all glued to you. And sometimes we roll, we're going to roll for three hours and it's 20 minutes and it's like, nobody's even looking at you. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's about them so you got to be flexible you got to be able to change you got to be able to adapt and and definitely multitask i mean you know you I love these new instructors i mean just you got to have different stations different things to keep them moving man it's just like i said it's chaos all day so once you see that and someone's not just sitting there waiting for two hours or you know i mean they put them in the gym at the high school on seventh period i mean send them here We'll give them something to do. There's plenty to do. You don't have to follow a rigid structure, man. Bend a little bit and have fun. That is incredible advice. I, I really hadn't heard that advice from an, an instructor before. And I, I can see where that's really important. And the preparation that goes into even having a backup plan to start with, you know, it, to have something to pivot to, I give you guys a lot of credit because that's, that's not an easy thing to do. No, no. I mean, we just, <laughs> we got the lesson plan. We just, you build it. I mean, that's what the instructors, once they start you know, whether, whatever curriculum they use or whatever. I mean, I got six other books with the same lab sheets, but they look a little different. So if I have to toss them out there and some kid needs to do it twice, he does it twice. And then he's teaching somebody and then his self-esteem's lifted up and it works out good. We just, we keep them moving and, and super flexible. And, you know, I guess I can say that because I'm retiring in a few years, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I try not to just teach state performance standards, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I mean, if we teach an outline, we'll hit it. We'll hit it somewhere there so we just be flexible please try to be flexible if you're out there and you're listening to your instructor flexible and be patient with these guys they have had a lot of structure i mean just you know you, i understand they missed three days and you're you're all ticked off but you know life's happening these guys are struggling they're trying to get a career we got a technician shortage i mean we had a kid he was coming here two days a week we come here four days a week then he flies and passes a break yeah, with no with no problem at all i'm like man i was all upset <laughs> but it's a good thing it's just crazy so be flexible and some guys just to be clear they're not passing like a stupid version of the aac this no. is our guys are passing the ones that are the industry standard and a lot of people want to write that off they're like oh they're a stupid version like the guy 
the past electrical was that was the that was that a, was the ASC whatever A six A yeah electrical ASC exam. I've tried to explain to our staff here uh, those that haven't had exposure to an ASC uh, test or exam how tough those can be uh, depending on you know and I think they've they've tweaked some things so it's not as much of like the most correct answer like it used to be but uh, right. it it uh, it's a challenge that that really puts you through the ringer and makes you think so uh, that's. That's impressive uh, to have a high school student and a, a tech school student doing that. That's yeah. a, I mean, it, it's incredible. It's it, it goes back to what you said before, where there's some really really smart people going through these programs, uh, regardless yeah. of age, and it's really cool to see. Have you heard of Runchway School Connect? Runchway School Connect is a free tool that makes it easier for schools to connect with local shops and dealerships and get the resources they need to attract students to technician programs and educate them about the industry. Schools can post requests for donations and resources from shops, and shops can post resources they have available to schools in their area. Shops and schools can visit runtway.com to contact us and learn more. Link is in the show notes. Uh, one, I, I want to talk about the, the building of the program again and the support of that program. One of the complaints that I hear oftentimes when talking with tech school instructors is that they'll get a bunch of calls at graduation time from people saying, well, we want your best graduate. We want your best graduate. And so often the, the instructor will tell me, well, that drives me crazy. I, my phone just blows up at graduation time and they've not said a peep in the year since last year when they did the same exact thing. Advisory committees are such a big piece of, of really that, right? You have communicating where the school's at and then getting feedback. Actually, I just, before we hopped on this recording, hopped off of another Zoom uh, advisory committee meeting, which was phenomenal. But how do, you, how do you make an advisory committee meeting effective? And when I say that, when you leave, both the shops and the educators get more than just a free lunch out of it. Wow, that's the million dollar question, right, Jay? I mean, we're we're, uh, we're probably technical schools are in the driver's seat the first time in history. I mean, there's a shortage for technicians and, and, and there's, you know, we just, we use it to leverage. I mean, there's, there's 12 jobs on our desk we can't fill. So we kind of just almost, once again, we're almost getting away from that traditional, come on in, eat lunch, you got to go, it's an hour in and out, here's what we're doing, you know? Yeah, it's been a it's been a dictatorship at the college level for so many years to where just, you know, those same five guys would come and they're like, hey, whatever, it's a free lunch. Yeah, I get it. But that's changing. I think there's a paradigm shift there as well, just to the point that we have an open door policy and they're starting to know that if they don't come in here and get involved during the whole week or whatever, stop by, say, hey, I mean, we just had a shop bring Jimmy John subs and everybody fed everybody. I mean, I'm sorry, but you're bribing me. Guess who I'm going to call first when we get a good student? I mean, it is what it is. I mean, come over, talk to them, get involved, just stand around. I mean, if you if you're if you're a school and you don't want them to come, obviously you got something to hide. You should be teaching, and it should be an open door policy. It shouldn't be an advisory meeting every two years. I know we have to do that, and we do do that, and that's neat because we get a formal deal going on. But I think to be effective, they have to be involved more than the two times a year. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what you do? There you go. Get them over here. <laughs> Whatever I said. Really, you gotta be. Yeah. But uh, all day long. <laughs> Why they love them so much? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I it I to me, it uh, you you hit it on the head there, right? Like there there was a, a shift in leverage where you were trying to find jobs for for these young techs coming out of school all the time and now it's the opposite where they're banging down your door trying to get something out of it right how how does a shop really get involved and and i when i say that you have an open door policy is it as, as easy as me just walking into the shop one day and introducing myself or is it you know sending an email a phone call what's what's the best way for a shop to kind of have that initial step in the above right yeah pretty much we, we're, we're fine with you just coming by it's like if you just want to show up hey i've stopped by i'm passing through the area i'm on my way to jacksonville or whatever just want to see what y'all had going on here we stop everything we drop what we're doing if we have kids in the shop kids we have guys in the shop the shop 
bring them down here and say, hey, what's going on in the automotive industry? You're you're working with diesels. What's what's different with diesels this year? What's what's going on with Nissan? Whoever's passing through, we want to know, you know, what's going on and how how we can do, like what's some things we can do to prepare them to get to the next level. And you're talking about people that are now involved. Um, like there's a local mom and pop shop tires around here. They like he said, brought by Jimmy John subs. Literally two weeks later, they had two of our guys. It wasn't because they bribed us. But there's also a local shop here, a Nissan dealer. We keep getting, they're the, about the only places that now will donate cars. And they've been donating to us and pretty much their shop is full of our guys. And it's not just because we're saying, all right, y'all go there. They gave us cars, but they, they see that they care and that they are invested. And it's like, if they're going to take care of the program, they're going to take care of me too. So, I mean, I, there's, you know, people do show up you know, once a year. Hey, they're calling from you know, hour, three hours away, and even 30, 45 minutes away. They want our latest and greatest. And a lot of these guys already have decided, sadly, I mean, not sadly, but they know where they want to go. Yeah. They come to the school, they know where they want to go. And realistically, we probably have three or four people per graduation that don't know what they're going to do. And we celebrate them. I mean, when they come, we celebrate them. I mean, that's, uh, we once again, we take a back seat. I mean, they're, would you like to talk to them if they're comfortable enough? Absolutely, man. We'll put everybody in here and tell them, tell them, what do you expect? What do you pay? I mean, just no, no, it's got to be transparent. It has to be transparent. I mean, we're going to send somebody to you. You got to be able to call us and go, hey, I don't like this guy. That's fine. Like you said, there's bad apples and they're all a bunch. You already mentioned that. That's not the school. We'll send you another one. You know, we want them to succeed because we want you to succeed. Yeah. So, you know, we just, once again, open door policy, but they have to as well. The shop does, you, you know, today, I mean, what, what's your pay scale? What's your, your flat rate? I mean, we can't throw them to the wolves. We try to educate them at the same time they're coming and educating us. So, you know, we have the kids asking questions. I mean, and they, the kids are prepped already. You know, what are the questions? You know, what do you pay? Are we going to be flat rate? Do you have work? I mean, what do we do there? I mean, am I going to be on the lube rack for six months? Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, don't fail in three months. I mean, it may take them six months to get attacked to fill your spot. So you're going to move up, but they need to hear that from them, not us. So when they come in, we celebrate them. We put them up front and we let them, we let them have at it. I mean, you know, then they feel comfortable coming by here and we'll still, we'll still email. We'll still phone call. That stuff's all relevant. We have a annual advisory meeting at the college itself. So we bring them in. Then we bust them up. We walk them through the program, but definitely, definitely right now, um, be involved, just be involved and be on there too. Not a, it's a give and take too. I mean, we're not going to ask that place for donations just because you're coming here. And that's, that's once again, you know, now you want students, we're just asking you to be involved. That's all. Just come and be involved and, and, and we'll make sure the students, we have a good relationship and it works out. It works out for the student and the shop. Well, and there's no coincidence that the students end up there. You know the place that you're sending them to and just the presence allows them to understand what the program even needs in the first place, right? It's sometimes right. it's those little things, you know, it could be something like, hey, we need a car, but it could also be something like, we could use this special tool or access to the software or, you know, something like that, that maybe, yeah, a scholarship, you might not get that in, you know, that just general advisory committee meeting, but you hit a school at the right point. And if you're present, you'll know what the school needs and what you can do to support that school. And I think that's what a lot of shops miss out on is the, the ability to be present with the school and understand what their needs are. And then just like you said, John, the opposite side of that, where you can help educate them on how to become a better shop or how to how to be more accommodating for that student when they're leaving your program to come into their shop. Yeah, and 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 the TV show. Fortunately, it's amazing how many corporations now are understanding that educational industry partnerships and what a gold mine that really is for them. I mean. I don't think they saw that five or six years ago, and now they're like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I could name off one of them. I won't, but, you know, just want involved in the program in the educational side. Because now they're showcasing, hey, we're, we're, we're helping this cause. I mean, we're, we're trying to invest in these kids and, and kids, you know. We got, <laughs> we got a 50-year-old vet here, too, that does a phenomenal job. God bless him. He's, he's like a second, third teacher here. But, I mean, just 
they just need to get involved. I mean, and, and in industry too, you guys, um, if you're out there, if you're industry, get involved with the schools. If you're not set up some kind of, you know, so many different websites we go to for outside sourcing to kids to look at and understand that, Hey, these corporations are doing things too, putting stuff on their websites, training, or even coming to the school and getting involved, get their district manager involved or parts houses, whatever it may be. It, it's a huge help. I mean, the, the more the merry. So when, once we get industry involved and say they're being more active, I think that, you know, so many shops don't want another shop involved or they want exclusivity, but you're, you're, they're missing the point at that point, right? Like where it's, it, you, 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 you got to help build a stronger program so that everybody's satisfied. Oh, big time. I mean, I think our future depends on it. I don't, you know, like I said, this is the first time I've been doing this now for 27 years. This is the first time we're in the driver's seat. I mean, we literally sit down with the kids and say, day one, it's a two-year program, 1,800 hours. Where, where do you want to work? Where do you want to work? And they're like, um, uh, Mercedes-Benz, like, you're in. It's two years, you're in. BMW, you're in. Chevrolet down the street, you're in. I mean, there's not a place that they could say where we probably with a phone call and, uh, and, and just just take them, take them. You know, you, I don't know. It, I guess there's a fine line there, and I'm probably skating it as far as being here for forever. And I know insurance will say, well, yeah, the on-job co-op and the paperwork. And once again, man, if we can if we can just get them over there for a day, I don't care if you call them absent, but just let them shadow for a day and hang out. They got to go to the shop too. So, I mean, they, they may not even want to work there. They may come back and go, I can't stand that place. Well, then that didn't work out. Why are we, why are we investing $500 in drug testing and all this other stuff and time and effort when he can shadow for free. And for free, it's, it's, you know, I mean, doctors, right. They go do their internship and stuff. They're not getting paid. They go to the hospitals and, and um, you know, they, they have to do all that internship. I think the students should have, should as well. I really do. I think there should be a relationship where they go over there and spend a week or two. You don't even have to pay them. Just yeah. see if they're going to meet your expectations at least. So, so we're on the same page. How do you, how the, how do the two of you feel about the expectations of a shop? Of a, of a new technician, right? And when I say that, it's at times I feel like, and especially as the pay scale's going up, right? I don't feel like the entry level pay is quite where it used to be, which rightfully so, it, you know, when Amazon's of the world and whoever is paying, fast food's paying 18 bucks an hour to start off, uh, you know, I, what is the expecta expectation level of a shop and is it realistic? I think that uh, different shops expect different things. I think it just depends on the individual and the personality. Um, but what we try to do is part of their expectations, we try to set them straight, so to speak. We tell them these guys are green coming out. They have a base knowledge. They got a lot of stuff in the back of their heads, but they, they've had, man, they've been drinking water through a fire hydrant for the past year, you know? And it's, it's back there. I mean, it got lodged back there somewhere. But we, we give them the expectation that they are green. And we let them know ahead of time, hey, this guy's going to be phenomenal. You just need to invest in this guy. This guy, he might need, you know, his hand held a little bit. And, but just take him along. He needs some hands-on. He didn't grow up, you know, with, with a hands-on experience like a lot of our guys around here have. So we, we're, we're transparent with them. We let them know, like he said from the beginning. Um, we, try to, we try to curb those expectations, but at the same time, raise the bar on let them know we take them around the facility and say hey this is what we taught them we taught them electrical we taught them can all this kind of stuff they have hands-on with this but it's up to you kind of take them to the next level absolutely i mean yeah i think it's just once again just you know green these guys these guys are this is your entry level tech if you're looking for a veteran tech this is not the place to come i mean i don't care what school and how great you think you are these guys go out there, you know, they're going to have to have a structure as far as paying, hopefully hourly for a while, you know, and wean them into flat rate that kills our guys right off the bat. I mean, they're not fast. They're not good. They can know where to get the knowledge. They have the ethics built in. They know where to show up. Um, don't have HR calls. Call us. I'll, I'll tell you, the kid comes two days a week if that's not going to help you. I mean, we put a guy at a, at a Ford dealership and, and I told him, I had an owner called me and I said, yeah, yeah, he's, he's rough. He's rough, man. But the dude can turn wrenches and he shows up here. I, I'm not going to guarantee he's going to be with you in six weeks, but if you need a guy right now, why don't you put him over there a year now and said, do you have any more like him? I'm just like, that's, it's shocking. It's surprisingly when they get out there and how they flourish. I mean, if you just give them a little space and give them a little time and, and expect mistakes too, I mean, 
it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen. You know, most schools have three cars. So unless you're a, a, a 2006 Pontiac Grand Am specialist, <laughs> if the car pulls in, they're like, what is this? They don't even know where the stuff is. So, but you want somebody with ethics, you want somebody with some, you know, knowledge in the back of the head to know where to find the information, talk to the instructor. You want somebody you can give the keys to a million dollar facility and they're not going to steal your tools. Talk to the instructor. He's two years, man. That's a long time. Jay, I mean, this is our second family. I mean, in two yeah. years, you you know that you know the guy and girl well, real well. I mean, you know, and, and you know if they're ethically going to make it or not, real quick. And most shops are just looking for that. You know, they'll they'll give them the hands on, they'll give them the training, but we just got to get through those two years of you know, can you put in that much discipline? How, think, oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say, I think we need to on our side, we have to curb expectations on both sides. Like, yeah. so you know, the shops. And I guess it's on experience on both ends. The shops sometimes think, well, they just went through two years of training. They should be experienced and be ready to go kind of thing. And the students, they have that mentality too because they can yeah. pass eight ASEs. They've got, you know, their master certification. Yeah, and they, yeah, and they walk out to the shop and they're, they're like a you know, deer in headlights, so to speak. So you have to curb their expectations yeah. at the same time and say, you're going to start off on the oil rack and you're going to hate your job probably for three years. Yeah, we tell them all the time. I said, the first thing you're going to do, and it happens every time, and I'm sure it happens to all the other instructors, you're going to come back in this door about three to six weeks, maybe six months, and you're going to curse me. You're going to say, man, you put me through this stuff. You lied. This is horrible. This job, this industry stinks. I don't know why I'm doing it. If you could stick it out for a year, then they come back and say, man, this was the best choice I've ever made. I'm making a fortune. I'm making a bunch. I got a wife and kids and life is grand. And here we go. And thank you so much for what you did. I mean, I can't tell you, we went out to eat and, you know, all of a sudden the, the it's like the bills paid and we look over, it's like, holy mackerel. That's a, that's that. Oh my gosh. That was back in 2004. Is that, you know, Jordan, whoever it is from the school, he's like, yeah, he's like, I got you guys. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's why we teach. That's the rewarding stuff right there. That is, that is yeah, so man. cool. That is so cool. Now, how do you, the, the personality thing and the piece of this that is, I think, so intriguing to me is when you know that student so well, and then you also have a pretty good understanding, especially if they're involved with your program, what the mentor or the employer is going to look like that you're sending them to. Is that in the back of your mind? Like, if I say, if I send Jimmy over here, I know he's going to have a tough time because I know who he's going to be working for. How much does that personality play into the success of, of somebody going and, and having a, a really good start to their career? Huge. Absolutely huge. You just, you just nailed it. I mean, I won't give a name, but he just went to a dealership and, and, and that dealership is a, a kind, cuddling, loving dealership. I mean, and this kid needed that. And then I have other kids that just cut loose and where's the place where they got the heavy trucks and the grease. I mean, and, and he doesn't mind ripping the wheels off and taking a, a pry bar and prying stuff off. And, you know, and, and some guys need organization. Some guys need a real rigid organization and some, don't work at some of the shops are just like, you know, no organizational skills whatsoever, just show up and we'll get six jobs going at once and go tear into this halfway and halfway that. So absolutely, I think it's a, a match matching is, is huge for us, right? Yeah, we have to, we definitely, that, that comes into the people, the dealerships and the employers coming to visit us because we get to know them and their personalities and they, they see how we teach and how we can interact and invest in the students, but we get to also hear how they interact and invest in their their technicians and their new guys. And so we've, we've built some relationships over the past couple of years with a couple of dealerships and with some guys that might not have been the best at wrench turning, but they were teaching, had the ethics, and we sent them to this specific dealer because they we knew that they would be taken care of and they would be patient with them. Patience. And, and yeah, exactly. And so in that three to five years, these guys would be, pretty good text, you know, to, to, you know, then they'd be paid and taken care of versus, you know, all right, you're going to be on the old rep for a year and now you're to the wolves. You know, some places are like that and some students can handle that, but you sure. know, we, we don't know who's going to do that until we get to know them. And we do, we do. Um, it's, it's the same scenario. I mean, we just, we, we just match them up. We try to match them up. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy to see, you know, we put a student somewhere, like he said, and just like, we were scared to death and, you know, and then they call back in six months, Hey, you have someone like him. He's doing great. He's flourished, but he's flourishing. And I'm like, wow. Okay. So that's, you know, that what that's what worked there. 
you know, like you said, some kids just tear into it and some kids not so much. So we'll call them up. And it's funny, Jay, because, you know, we can say, hey, this kid wrench is unbelievable. But man, oh God, if he has to talk to a customer, we're in deep trouble. He's like, perfect, you know, or this guy, he can talk to a customer. He's pretty intelligent, but he's really not the best wrench. Can you work with him? Yes. So, you know, you know that after two years, any automotive instructor knows that if he's spending time with his students, I mean, really, really fast, you know, and, and who's going to, Who's going to do, listen, this kid needs A, B, C. This kid, cut him loose, all right? But he needs A, B, C, and then he's going to come ask a question. That's how we've trained him, all right? If he gets to D, E, F, he's going to blow your engine up. <laughs> 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 it is what it is. I mean, you know, he just, just and, and, and we got kids that, you know, tear into it. Just And we got to say, stop, slow down, stop, slow down, stop. You don't know what you're doing. I do know what I'm doing. Bam, it's broke. You didn't know what you were doing. Stop. You got to ask questions. So patience, patience, yeah. big one. You can tell who was told to hold the light and who was able to, you know, to get, <laughs> get, hold the hands dirty, you know, get their hands dirty in the, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> in, the, in, the in the garage. So. Well, you guys, you, you hit on another really key point there too. And something that I think shops could do a better job of in general is understanding what the school is teaching and how they're teaching it, right? If if you're teaching them a certain diagnostic approach and that might be different than what they see in the shop. I know my, my good friend, George Aarons with ASE always talks about this, that they might not be doing it wrong. They might just be doing it the way that they were taught. And sometimes maybe a, a shop manager doesn't like that. They, they want them to do it a different way, but it might help that shop a lot to understand how you're teaching the theory behind it or how you're how you're teaching a diagnostic process so that they they can incorporate that into their system and not derail what they've already been trained on yeah that's incredible i mean we just yeah that would that would be hugely helpful we don't do that i mean we just we tell the kids i mean flat out that you know you're an employee keep your head down shut up they want you to mop the bathroom, mop the bathroom today. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you're, you're still getting paid as long as you're on that hourly salary. You know, you're just going to have to put in that internship or that little bit of time. But that that's absolutely huge, helpful. I mean, we treat, we teach the strategy-based diagnosis and going about a system on everything we do. But they get out there and there's a different system. I mean, we just found that out with the, the Honda. I mean, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, it, it bites us too, so flexibility <laughs> yeah it's just yeah, yeah well, it's crazy uh, 40 personalities think about it trying to match them up i mean yeah you just be transparent the back we'll send you somebody else well and i i think we talk about that with veteran technicians too right so many shops are so desperate for techs that they'll just hire whoever comes in the door they'll hire the next body because they're trying to plug the hole in the boat before it sinks right and i i I really advise against that with these yeah. shops because what happens is you hire people that don't either fit your culture or truly fit what you're looking for in a technician. And that technician becomes frustrated uh, because maybe they're that person looking for that warm, loving home, but ends up in a shop that might be a little bit more uh, rigid, rigidly run, or, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, it, it, those conflicting personalities can really, hamper progress of an individual. And I think it, it's not only for new techs, it's for, for veteran techs as well, people that have been around the industry for a long time. If they don't find the right fit, what we're seeing is they just leave the industry altogether. They, they think all shops are that way and it gives them a bad taste in their mouth. And it truly is because there's just differences in personality. And if they were to find the right fit for them and truly find the right fit, their longevity changes in the industry. How in another thing, I'll reference George Aarons again. He says that we chew up and spit out our young technicians better than any other industry out there. Right. And I, I just can't compliment you guys enough for for taking that extra step to understand personalities and the dynamic that's behind that. So you're putting somebody in a place that has the best chance to to survive. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it, Jay. I mean, just, uh, you know, that's that shadowing and getting out there and moving around to different dealers. I mean, if we can, if we can nip that right at the beginning, it's huge. That's that that saves the kid moving around. And, and, you know, you talk about those techs out there. I mean, yeah, I was one of them. I mean, the, what's the common denominator? I mean, it's usually the tech bouncing around, you know, thinking it's going to be better here and there. And we get guys like that all the time. We get some students, you know, and they call us, you know, hey, man, I'm thinking about moving dealerships. I'm like, why? 
why, you know, explain why you invested this time in there and, you know, oh, they're going to give me two more dollars. Well, all right. But, you know, just let's, let's, let's think about what you invested, like you said. And usually the common denominator is a technician. He's usually bounced to six shops already anyway. And just, you know, once you get that relationship and you're, you're solid at a place, man, they're going to give you the world. Right. I mean, that's yeah. how it works. So. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about was the opportunities for females in the industry and growing more of, of that side of the business. I think it's something we kind of turned our head on for a long time and not just, I don't, I think, I almost think society in general was that way for a long time, but I, I see a lot of opportunity for bringing really talented young females into the business. Are you guys seeing any any influx of, of the female demographic coming into the program or do you see opportunity to there? I do. I mean, we've had them through the past, not any more than we've ever had before. I mean, we're not, it's, it's as it really changed to the point where we're seeing it here at school, but I've seen it through the years. I'm super conscientious about their work and, and what's going on and, and very meticulous. And, and they've done a phenomenal job. We've had students graduate here, still are doing a really good job. As far as getting them into the program, I still think we're down to the middle school, high school level of, you know, shifting that thought process of what do we do here and what we're doing. And, you know, we're covered in head to toe to grease and all of us are sitting around a car while the instructor fixes it. I think that whole still plays in unfortunately after 28 years i still think that even the counselor's perspective of the automotive is, is is not the greatest i mean that's hard to overcome yeah i think i mean and i think also at the same time you want you want females to feel welcome and i think in the past uh environments weren't as professional as they are now and so there's a big stigma there and um for better for worse but also at the same time um i guess guys and girls are designed different and Typically, females aren't going to be all greasy. You know, that's stereotypical. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there are some out there that want want to be. We got three three in our class now, and they're doing great. You know, three out of the 35, 40 students that we have, and they're doing they're doing awesome, and they're willing to uh, to do to do the dirty work. And you know, if something requires a little bit more leverage, they'll go get a breaker bar and extend it extend it out so they can so, so, they, so they don't need no guy to help them out they can do it themselves <laughs> and we don't treat them any different that's i think if they understood that i don't think the school differentiates between them when they come in here they're expected to do the lab sheets the jobs and everything else and, and that's what they'll feel here real quick they're just like oh i'm just one of them yeah you're one of them if you're here to hang out and, and, and you know you're not going to do it it's not it's the wrong place these girls are all career driven, they're re ready to get a career day one, you know, is this what you want or, or are your parents making you go to college or are you on a scholarship and you have to come here? I mean, you know, we'll turn them around too, but we'll weed them out real quick. I mean, you'll, you'll find in a good school that's teaching, you know, they're going to fall behind really, really quick. Like anything else, they're like, maybe this isn't for me and, and that's fine. Let's figure out what is for you. There's so many great workforce fields out there right now. I mean, so once again, just reading that personality, but not treating them any different. Yeah. I think kind of like engineering, um, that was a, a heavy uh, male industry and a lot of females are starting to trickle it in. And I think we'll start to see that in the automotive technician side as well, because there is so much um, diagnoses and things like that with you know, computers and technology. And, you know, it's not just this, the stigma, even, I mean, the stigma is still there. That it's just, you know, grease work, you know, you right. know not nobody bad. realizes that you get out of oscilloscopes and service manuals, online service manuals and TSBs and, there's a, there's a lot to it now that people don't realize with the CAN bus system, uh, the patterns and everything that you were just talking about today with the ignition coils and, you know, and the burn time and, and the dwell time and all kinds of things like that. It's still all there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even the ability to write a good work order, right? Uh, it, like it, it, exactly. just uh, those skills are so vital to a good technician. And there's some very, very good technicians out there that are terrible at writing work orders. So I, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, fine points that uh, that really honestly they kind of favor a female's uh, uh, ability and their talents and in a lot of cases so I think that's great now one thing uh, you guys had mentioned was the uh, the guidance counselors do you see any paradigm shift there as of yet uh, like are they becoming more favorable to our programs or is it still kind of an uphill battle in getting them to look at us seriously 
It's a chicken. I mean, we got a certain few, I mean, you know, that, that do that. And then, you know, if you're, you guys know, it's, it's, once again, it's all about the funding, you know, a lot of tech schools get students from a high school. So if you're taking it away from their funding and, you know, we got, fortunately, we got a small town and a small five county community where these, even the principals call us up and say, you know, Hey, I got a kid that really is going to do well. And once again, it's that relationship. I believe, I think, you know, they're more willing to give the student and the FTE, the federal funds up to come to automotive for the kids success. So it has to, it has to come from their end too. I mean, you know, yeah. it's street. I mean, you know, if you're going to keep them in the gym, just to keep them in the gym for your federal funding, well, shame on you. I mean, you know, they, they want to come here. We do, we have a lot of career day fairs. Once again, we just do, we probably break the rules too much and I'm probably going to get fired after this, but <laughs> call the counselor and say ship them down for a day and we'll 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 hit play with the play with the crew come on down man just sit. and boy, they go back to school the next day refreshed and this is a career they want to do i mean they should have to spend a day with us not just enroll and come over here as a dual enrolled student spend a day here maybe you don't want to do it i know but our guys and girls are so accepting that if you come down here man they just show off and they have a probably one of the best days in their their whole high school career when they come down and hang out at an automotive shop and then they feel more comfortable to register and come over here or they have their parents or, or harass the counselor if they have to you know i've done that with my kids when in, you know hey they're going to do early admit at the college because they're doing nothing here you got to have that parental support and they have to just they lift their voice man lift their voice go in there and tell them this is what he wants to do and and there's avenues to do it but unfortunately, somebody's losing some money here or there. <laughs> well, I, I think in general, one of the, the coolest parts about how you guys are pairing this up we, between the show and the school is the show creates a lot of visibility. And it's not just for your, you know, your immediate community or like the surrounding areas. You're, you're impacting a lot of people all over the country. And I know for me growing up, my dad always had those shows on, on TV, you know, Hot Rod Garage, everything, you know, that was kind of a, a staple in our house and it continues to be today. You know, even if I'm in the garage, I got a TV out there and throw, you know, I'll throw the shows on. I think the visibility and seeing the backside of it and then seeing, bringing in a community that might not even normally watch that kind of brings acceptance into who we are as an industry and, and shows We've got some pretty cool stuff. I mean, the, between the tools and the vehicles themselves, uh, the people, I say this constantly, I've been in this business my entire life. The people are really what make it what it is. There's a lot of really, really great people in our industry, influential people such as the two of you. Uh, and I, I can't commend the both of you enough for what you're doing out there uh, for both the show, the visibility for the industry, uh, and then working with the young people to make sure that you're guiding them in the right direction. So uh, just f f for me, I, I greatly appreciate everything you're doing out there and, and just hope you keep it up because it's amazing work. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's the biggest compliment we could have got because that's what we do the show. We don't do it for us. I mean, it's it's on YouTube. It's available to the schools and the training we do and all this stuff. I mean, we just we try to get it out there. It's free curriculum. I know what he's up against and other instructors against when they get the keys thrown to them. Just use as much as you can use man get on the internet use that stuff find a reputable source use it man change up it's five minutes of this ten minutes of that so it's it's all out there now it's floating around for seven or eight years so that's exactly why we do it jay we do it just to get it out there and get the industry we're not we're not anybody special i think there's any instructor in the world could do exactly what we're doing we're just teaching automotive but at least it's a like you said it's a it's a national audience and a stage to do it to promote our industry so we're excited thank you so much for having us absolutely and uh, as a reminder when when is tech garage uh airing yeah, here's Saturday mornings on Motor Trend, um, 8 a.m. Eastern and Pacific. They got a live feed in, in uh, uh, both, both Pacific, so 8 a.m. Uh, uh, on Motor Trend. So it's always there, and then it, it re-airs on Revin and Revin Canada, Revin and, and all kinds of other networks after it airs on Motor Trend. It's all over the place. Or they could go to TV as well, and, and all the episodes are there as well, and they can look them up and, and use them in class, man, and reach out to us, I, our college email here, and We'll give you a little outline of what the shows t touch on and it's a good educational tool just you know you got 1800 hours to teach so try to use as much curriculum as you can use in different different venues well guys it's it's absolutely been a pleasure uh hope to have you on the show again at some point down the road it, it was a lot of fun 
very informative. There were some key points that I was taking notes on, uh, as I commonly do throughout the podcast, but just some really good things that I, I feel like I can use in, in my dealings with schools and, and hopefully improve how I go about it as well. So thank you again. Yep. Thanks for Wrenchway. You guys doing what you're doing and pairing it up and, and bridging this gap between the schools and the shops. I think you guys are doing huge as far as, you know, addressing that tech, tech, technician shortage because it, it's going to be an issue. There's no doubt about it. So thank you guys as well. That's what we need. We need all of you guys that we can. That's uh, that's uh, the more great instructors that we have out there, the better foundation we set for this whole thing. So uh, appreciate it and uh, uh, have a great day. Awesome. See you guys.